Hey guys, thank you for watching the Slat Rock channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notified every time we post a new video. And if you've already done so, just make sure that it's still active. Here is your news for September 12, 2019. We're starting with news from Raw and SmackDown Live today. As though the WWE brought back two of its biggest stars for the shows, neither moved the ratings. On Raw, Stone Cold Steve Austin couldn't stop the red brand from dropping to a near-record low TV audience, and though the 2.06 million who tuned in to see The Undertaker on SmackDown wasn't too bad, it was still a loss of 69,000 from last week. To be fair to Raw, this Monday's show had to compete with the NFL, something SmackDown didn't, as Tuesday's show was the seventh most watched cable original all night, behind shows from MSNBC and Fox. Though it came in seventh, SmackDown did win in the 18 to 49 demographic with 0.62 share, though this was also down from last week and the lowest since July. These low figures may explain why the King of the Ring tournament finals between Baron Corbin and Chad Gable has been moved from this Sunday's pay-per-view to Raw, as the company clearly needs to find ways to get fans to tune in. This Sunday's show also had plenty of matches already announced, with 11 matches currently announced for the card, and given fan complaints about pay-per-views being too long, this may explain why the tournament finals were moved to a day later. For as long as WWE has been around, the company has used legends like Austin and The Phenom to help pop the ratings, though given the scores this week, it could be time for the company to rethink their strategy. One strategy WWE is reportedly considering is bringing an end to the wildcard rule, and this has been felt by everyone from the superstars to the commentators. According to WrestleVotes, Michael Cole will be moving back to SmackDown when the blue brand moves to Fox 11 years after he was drafted to Raw. Vic Joseph will be replacing Cole as the voice of the red brand, and he certainly got the talent to do so if his time in NXT and 205 Live is anything to go by. Joseph recently filled in for Corey Graves on Raw, and it's unclear where the tattooed talker will end up, though it's expected that he won't be pulling double duty. There has been speculation that Renee Young will move to SmackDown in this draft, as Fox reportedly like her style and want her for their studio show on Fox Sports 1. It'll be interesting to see how the commentary teams end up, but for now, these reports aren't set in stone. Speaking of voices of wrestling, Mackenzie Mitchell worked as a backstage interviewer for Impact Wrestling from 2016 to 2019, but has now made the leap to WWE. Since leaving Impact, Mitchell worked for a regional Fox Sports cable network out of LA and did some commentary on the indies. Taking to Twitter this week, Mitchell revealed she would be a new WWE on-air host, describing the job as a dream come true, and she isn't the only one to get a role with the company. Many wrestling fans may know Matt Camp as the occasional co-host of Busted Open Radio, as well as his announcing work for Tommy Dreamer's House of Hardcore, but now he's found a role in WWE. On Twitter, Camp got sentimental about his first time seeing WWE in Madison Square Garden and revealed his new role as an on-air host for WWE. Outside of wrestling, Camp is also one of Bleacher Report's lead fantasy football analysts and the host of SiriusXM's Fantasy Sports Radio, so time will tell whether he can keep those ventures going, now as a WWE employee. Fans should expect to see a lot of changes both in and out of the ring over the next couple of weeks, as low ratings and a rumored draft could provide a whole new company very soon. Speaking of people in new jobs, WWE Hall of Famer Kurt Angle is now officially a full-time producer. Though Angle has been working in the role since his WrestleMania 35 farewell match against Baron Corbin, the job was only made official this week, and Angle will be working as part of the Monday Night Raw brand. Of course, Angle's in-ring career is the stuff of legend, with the Olympic gold medalist winning his first of six WWE World Championships in his rookie year with the company. A true jack-of-all-trades who exceeded at every aspect of both amateur and professional wrestling, from in-ring skills to promos, it's hard to think of anyone better suited to the role than the Olympian, who also has the respect of the entire roster backstage thanks to his legendary matches and decades within the industry. From one former WWE superstar to another now, as Ryback Reeves has never been shy about calling out his former employer. According to reports, WWE tried to get Ryback to relinquish his name when he left the company in 2016, 
and also wanted the term removed from his social media profiles. Clearly, that didn't happen, as Reeves legally changed his name to Ryback and still uses the name to this day. On Twitter this week, Reeves called out a WWE employee called Matthew, describing him as a piece of you-know-what after he was allegedly responsible for some of the issues surrounding Ryback's name. It's certainly a big accusation to make by the former Intercontinental Champion, who hasn't had many positive things to say about WWE in the three years since his departure. We're going from one former WWE superstar to a future WWE star, as former United Kingdom Champion Pete Dunne is expected to be featured on NXT when the show moves to the USA Network. Dunne's reign with the UK title lasted an incredible 685 days, and according to the PW Insider, the British bruiserweight is in the process of moving to the United States full-time. Dunn has had a few appearances in NXT, as well as on the main roster, as he was one of the 30 superstars in this year's Men's Royal Rumble. Though Dunn could be in line for a big push in the near future, one NXT alum who isn't is EC3, who was reportedly banged up after a match with Titus O'Neil. According to Fightful, Carter suffered some quote, sloppy body slams, and though the report said the former Impact World Champion is doing fine now, it still isn't great news. Since being called up to the main roster after his 2018 return to the company, EC3 has barely been used, but as random as WWE's pushes can be, he needs to be in top shape if his time ever comes. While EC3 probably isn't going to be the next top star of WWE, Bray Wyatt may be just that, especially if what fans are speculating online comes true. On Raw this week, The Fiend hosted his latest installment of the Firefly Funhouse, where a clock set at 11.19 has led many fans to believe Wyatt will target The Undertaker next. November 19, 1990 was the date of The Phenom's first match in WWE, and though Wyatt and The Deadman didn't interact on SmackDown this week, it could still be happening. As Brad Shepard explained, why didn't they have The Fiend attacking The Undertaker on SmackDown Live? They kept them separate so they could continue to build. Right now, the plan is for the confrontation to take place on the inaugural SmackDown on Fox. If Shepard is right, then the pair will meet on the October 4th edition of SmackDown, and though the Phenom bested the Eater of Worlds at both WrestleMania and Survivor Series in 2015, he could be on the receiving end of a mandible claw, courtesy of the Fiend. We are taking a break from the ring now to look at literature, as former WWE superstar Hornswoggle has released his memoirs. Hornswoggle, real name Dylan Postal, may be best known for being Vince McMahon's illegitimate son, in a truly bizarre storyline which the former cruiserweight champion will go into detail in his new book. An interesting read to say the least, Swoggle may have Stephanie McMahon to thank for an increase in sales, as the WWE executive tweeted her praise of the book to her over 3 million followers. In response, Hornswoggle thanked the Billion Dollar Princess for her support, and his memoirs, Life is Short and So Am I, is available to purchase now. While the idea of making Postal a leprechaun was an interesting gimmick to say the least, it wasn't the only unique character on SmackDown in 2006. Around the same time, Big Vito would start wearing a dress, and recently spoke to Wrestling Inc. about the character. Though it may not have seen Vito get a push, instead becoming a regular on Velocity, Vito said the character meant a lot to him, saying, it was Stephanie and Vince that came up to me after a TV taping and said, we have an idea for you. What do you think of wearing a dress? I said, if that's what you want me to do, I'll do it. Continuing, Vito explained how he did his best to make the character seem real, going out in public in a dress when traveling between shows. It was probably one of the last kayfabe gimmicks that was ever done in WWE. I wore it. I went out in it. I traveled in it. I did a lot of great things and did TV openings and talk shows. That gimmick was ahead of its time because it stood for a lot of things. Though it was a unique gimmick at the time, and the commentators laughing about the idea of a man in a dress didn't exactly help the transgender community, Vito said that he received a ton of support from victims of domestic abuse, as well as men who told him that they wished they had his confidence. It was a soul-searching thing that taught me a lot about life in general. You learn about yourself as a man and a human being. I wouldn't change it for the world. Though Vito enjoyed the character, he also admitted that things weren't easy for him backstage with the dress, and spoke about how he was supposed to have a title match against then-world heavyweight champion King Booker, but was replaced by The Undertaker, which knocked his confidence. 
Though the odds of Vito ever being a world champion with or without the dress were practically zero already, the former FBI member did prove just how important having confidence in a gimmick is. Though some wrestlers would have outright refused to wear the dress, Vito was all for it and had some great fun, made fans and plenty of money along the way. Away. Well guys, that's our news for today. Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you for watching.